Greetings to all. Uh, welcome back to Tim Time Projects here. So I just want to do a quick video. I'm, I'm using SDR Sharp, the uh, software that I use for my uh, RTL SDR radio. <laughs> I was going to try and show it to you, but I can't get it up to go that far because it's got cables going everywhere. Um, but I want to try and just see what happens. I want to use it like a uh, like a spectrum analyzer because as I've alluded to before those are a little bit costly and I just really don't do that much work where I could justify not that I had that kind of money but that I could justify getting one uh, so I'm waiting for this to, to kick on because I have used it before kind of like a, a spectrum analyzer just to check when I'm working on a radio what I have but I have the uh, Oh, what the heck's that big gigantic monster? The um, 8656B, I have it plugged into the input, and I wanted to feed an S9 signal at uh, 14.2 megahertz, which is where they always tell you to check the ham, uh, the ham band right there in the middle. So we'll see what happens there. Let me get this set up, and I want to kind of get a look. So uh, minus 73 dB would be, uh, well, that would be 9 an S9 on the uh, on the scale on the uh, signal meter on the radio so I'm just trying to get a look there and again uh, as we all do I'm using very very little instruction input from anything I'm just trying to muddle my way through this so give me a few minutes and we'll see what we get all right now I can see that I'm gonna have to plug my camera in here before it dies let me see if I can catch it plugged in. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I haven't really done anything yet, but one thing I did want to kind of show you because I know I ran into a lot of this when I first started with this. Back I don't know so you can see what I'm doing. So to change the frequency, really all you do is hover your mouse over it and well, of course I'm not using a laptop, I'm using a desktop. And it has a little wheel on the mouse, but use the little wheel and you can make your frequency go up and down. Just hover over what you wanted. So we want Excuse me, 14.2. There's 14.2, and we'll turn this one down, and we'll turn this one down, and that one down. So there's your 14.2, and I know things are a little crooked. Let me see if I can straighten that out a little bit. Ugh. There we go. All right, so I got that 14.2, and I'm going to turn it on to receive. Let me get ready for the volume here, just in case it's crazy. All right. And I don't see anything there quite yet. So let's see if I have to change my sampling. So I hit the uh, hit, hit the stop guy this here and we'll try with on that quadrature sampling and close and just see what we get nothing yet what what have what have I done well I think too I have to turn it on to AM Let me go back. I think I'm low enough where I need where I need the uh, direct Q for the direct sampling on the Q branch. Close. And where's my noise floor? Well, there it is. So, if this truly is DBM over here, and I don't know if it is or not, I didn't look it up. I'm below the noise floor because 73 would be way down here somewhere. There's seven, minus 75, there's minus 70. So let me just take it up to, we'll just say minus 60 and look in this general area because I do see a spike there. So maybe, maybe that spike was there all along, 14.2. 
Um, yeah, it's telling me the floor is 66 something, so we're below that. So let me let me bring it up to about 60, and we'll watch that spike. You can see what I'm talking about right here in the red. There's a little spike. So when I bring this up, let's see the amplitude. This mine's 63. Okay, so that was definitely it. And if you noticed, all the other spikes came up, and I don't really put too much into that because there's no filters turned on to this. And I have heard people say with these that if you don't have the filters, you won't really pick a lot of things up because it picks up whatever's strong in the area. Um, for picking up ham radio and stuff, uh, especially down here on the HF band, I never have that issue. But I do occasionally see some, like, like an AM radio station or something that's nearby that's giving me noise way, way up here somewhere. And, uh, but anyhow, that, that just has nothing to do with it. So I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit and see what we get. That's, oh, that's the wrong one. That would be contrast, so. There we go. So there it is. So let me try and, and modulate it a little bit and see what we end up with. happened is, and I know I showed you before, that was a problem with the uh, signal generator that was doing that. So there you can see my signal in the middle and the two side bands on either side. And as I bring the modulation down, you see the side bands starting to come down. So let's try that. So there are the side bands on the way. And I can probably raise them up enough to cause all kinds of havoc. Look at all the uh, look at all the noise, and you can even hear because I'm way I'm over modulated. So that shows you kind of, you can at least get a look at your signal. Uh, now let's say in minus 75 is the noise floor. But that's dBFS, not dBM, and I'd have to convert that. Okay, so there's... Um, this is the filter that it's been on for forever and it doesn't really seem to make any difference what I'm doing here. I guess I have to research a little bit deeper into that as well, but uh, it might not be for this. It may not have any effect on on what I'm doing here, so maybe I won't see a change. But I'll, I'll change, uh, to give you for instance, uh, I'll change the, the audio frequency here and you'll see these. Uh, they should probably move in because I think I'm at the thousand with the one kilohertz. So I'll move it if I can. I'll change it to 400. Make sure move in about halfway. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Uh, then I'll turn that up a little bit. See if we get to a point where we'll get a bunch of distortion. 
And there it is. You can even hear it. How it changed from a crisp. Well, maybe you can hear it. I'll let the camera pick it up. But it changed from a crisp tone. And you can even see the noise down in the uh, waterfall. But anyhow, just uh, just a quick video. Let's see. So if I'm using. Let's see my. Turn it down. Let me use my rule of thumb here and go with minus. No, I didn't want to do that. Yep, let's do it. Minus 73. Where the heck is it? DVM. So that correlates to the peak is 22.9. I think it's decibel full full scale or something. I kind of remember that, but I I don't think there's any type of standard conversion that you can do for that, you know, because dec decibel is kind of like a ratio sort of thing. So, uh, so minus 73, which would be an S9 signal, is 22.9. I should probably write that down because I'll forget it. Not that I think it really matters. I'm just I just do this to look at the signal itself and make sure that it doesn't have a bunch of junk all the way down both sides of it. And I don't know how much I can zoom out to see that. You can see some noises on the side. And again, let's see. I don't know if those noises are from this or not. Let me see. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so all of those noises are what I'm picking up. And again, I, I think it's just the filtering on here. So what I want to do is just change this and see if this makes any difference on any of those. Not on that one. Not on that one. We already tried that one. Not on that one. Not on that one. So Again, none of those seem to be making any difference. We'll go back to this. And the other thing we want to do is, uh, while I'm here, I want to look at that changing where it's sampling from. Remember the direct Q sampling. Let's just try it with quadrature sampling because that's, I think, where the default is. Let's see what that does. Ah, the noise she's gone all together. So let me, I don't think I can, you have to, have to stop it while I do this. Go back, let me try the other one, the eye branch. I'm just curious what that does. Close and, <laughs> that looks like it's picking up the harmonics but not the center. So back to Q branch. And close. And there it is. So yeah, and you I, I can turn on a different radio and just confirm that none of these are here. They're not really there. It's just this is picking it up. Um Okay. Let me see if we can think of anything else neat neat to do. All right, so one last thing I do want to do, this right here, this guy here, that's a nice high signal. And if it's for real, it's saying it's right around 14.6. And it's every bit as powerful as this signal right here. So without changing anything, I'm going to plug this into the TS940 at 14.2 megahertz. And we're going to hear what the signal is, and then we're going to look at 14.6 on the TS940 and see if we have anything. So give me a second to plug that in. Okay, excuse the hand holding, but uh, I had to do that so that I could uh, get a little bit of charge on the computer, on the camera. Anyhow, so you see it's at 14.2 and you can hear that noise and it's pretty much an S9. So now, I want to go to what 14.6. 
nothing there. So as you see, that noise isn't really there. It just has to do with how the uh, SDR is picking things up. So when they're talking about the filters, getting filters, high pass or low pass filters, I think is, is what they offer for that. That's why it would cut some of that noise out. And again, if you live close to, say, a television station or something, uh, a radio station, if, if they're still doing any type of air broadcasting, uh, that may limit without without having a filter that may limit on what you can pick up so go back to 14 you can see the s meter's not moving for anything but when i get down here to 14 too it'll there's something but that's not from the signal generator i don't know what that is but here here you go there's my s9 so anyhow uh hope you enjoyed it hope it's something you can if you didn't already think of it, which I'm sure you did, but uh, if not, something you can play around with. You can use your SDR as a uh, a poor man's spectrum analyzer. So, thanks for watching. Enjoy.